In this video, we'll measure the natural response of an RC circuit. We'll see that there are two different ways to create a natural response with the analog discovery. These ways differ in the way in which the source is disconnected from the capacitor when the response is initiated. We won't do any examples of the natural response of RL circuits in this video, but the basic concepts for RL circuits are the same as for RC circuits. First, just a quick reminder about the natural response of RC circuits. An RC circuit consists of a single capacitor and an equivalent resistance seen by that capacitor. The capacitor has some initial voltage V0, and we're interested in the capacitor voltage for all subsequent times. The capacitor voltage is going to decay exponentially with time from its initial voltage. The rate of decay is characterized by the time constant, tau. The time constant is the amount of time taken for the signal to decrease to 36.8% of its initial value. For an RC circuit, the time constant is the equivalent resistance times the capacitance. In a natural response, the initial voltage across the capacitor is created by applying a power source to the capacitor. How that power supply is removed from the capacitor, however, can affect the response of the circuit. One option, of course, is simply to disconnect the source from the circuit, generally using a switch. In this case, the source becomes an open circuit. In this circuit, for example, if we open the switch, the equivalent resistance seen by the capacitor is R2, and the circuit's time constant is R2 times C. An alternate approach is to turn the source off. In this case, the source behaves more like a short circuit. Using our previous example, if we turn this source off, this becomes a short circuit, and the equivalent resistance seen by the capacitor is R1 in parallel with R2. The time constant becomes R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2, all times the capacitance C. In this video, we'll create and test examples of both of these circuits. Here's the circuit that we'll create in our first example. You'll, we'll use V plus to apply the initial voltage to the capacitor. We have two 2.2 kilo ohm resistors in our circuit and a 47 microfarad capacitor. At time t equals zero, we'll disconnect our source from the circuit and examine the capacitor's voltage as a function of time after that. We don't have an actual switch in our parts kit, so we'll disconnect the source by physically disconnecting the V plus terminal from our circuit. We'll simply unplug the V plus terminal from the breadboard. Now initially, we're going to assume that the power source has been connected to the capacitor for a long time. So the capacitor looks like an open circuit. In this case, the voltage across the capacitor is the same as the voltage across this resistor. These two resistors form a voltage divider, and the initial capacitor voltage is one half of the supply, or 2.5 volts. After the voltage source is disconnected, the equivalent resistance seen by the capacitor is just this 2.2 kilo ohms, since there's no current through this capacitor. Therefore, our expected time constant is 2.2 kilo ohms times 47 microfarads, or about 0.103 seconds. Let's create this circuit now and see how its behavior compares with these expectations. Here's our circuit. We have V plus connected to one terminal of this resistor. This resistor is connected to this resistor and the capacitor in parallel at this terminal. Ground is at this terminal and we're measuring the capacitor voltage with channel one of our oscilloscope. In order to get our natural response, we're going to just unplug V plus from the circuit and watch the circuit's response as time goes to infinity. First, of course, we need to turn on our power supply to create an initial voltage across the capacitor. Now let's set up the oscilloscope to measure our natural response. We want to acquire a single snapshot of the voltage response when we unplug the voltage source, so we'll use a single button to start acquiring the data. The time constant is about 100 milliseconds, so I'll use that as our time base. I'll also set the channel 1 scale to 500 millivolts per division with a negative 1 volt offset. This should give us a reasonable vertical scale on our scope window. Things will be happening quickly, so we'll want to set up a trigger to start acquiring data once the voltage source is unplugged. Choose Normal under the Trigger menu. The voltage across the capacitor will decrease with time after we unplug our source, so we want to set our trigger condition to falling. The initial voltage will be 2.5 volts, so I've set the trigger level to just a little below that at 2 volts. Now let's go ahead and start acquiring data unplug the voltage source, 
There's our natural response. Here is where we unplugged our voltage source. The voltage decays after that time. The initial voltage is 2.5 volts as we expect, so now we just need to measure the time constant. It's probably easiest to do that accurately using the cursors. We'll set one vertical cursor at the initial voltage, about 2.5 volts. The other cursor goes at a voltage level after one time constant. 36.8% of 2.5 volts is 0.92 volts. And the time that we want to measure is the time between those two voltage levels. So we're getting about 102 milliseconds, which is extremely close to our expectations. Now let's briefly look at our second way to create a natural response by replacing the voltage source with a short circuit. Here's the circuit we'll be using. It's identical to our previous example circuit, except that we'll apply voltage to the capacitor with our waveform generator. When the waveform generator's voltage goes to zero volts, the power supply looks like a short circuit. So our conceptual circuit for the situation is shown here. So that we can compare our results to our previous case, we'll apply a five volt change using the waveform generator. As in our previous circuit, when the applied voltage is five volts, the capacitor voltage is 2.5 volts. However, unlike our previous circuit, our equivalent resistance is a parallel combination of two 2.2 kilo ohm resistors, or 1.1 kilo ohms. This results in a time constant which is about half of our previous value, or about 0.052 seconds. To obtain our natural response using a waveform generator, we'll use a square wave to apply the voltage. A square wave alternates between high and low voltages. If we start acquiring our data when the applied voltage is high, and then have the voltage go low, we can obtain our desired natural response. We just need to make sure that the period of the square wave is long enough so that the circuit can reach steady state both before and after the transition, a period that's more than about five or 10 times longer than the circuit's time constant should be plenty of time to reach steady state. Now let's wire up our circuit and see how it behaves relative to our expectations. Our circuit for this part simply consists of our old circuit with V plus replaced by channel one of our arbitrary waveform generator. First, of course, we need to set up our waveform generator to apply the desired voltage. We want a square wave that goes from zero volts to five volts, so we'll set the amplitude to 2.5 volts and provide an offset of 2.5 volts. The expected time constant of the circuit is about 0.05 seconds, so I'm gonna set the period of our signal to two seconds. This means that the waveform generator will apply five volts for one second and zero volts for one second. These times are about 20 times the time constant, so there should be no problem with the circuit reaching steady state. I'm gonna go ahead and start applying power to the circuit. The oscilloscope setting should be more or less the same as in our previous example. However, since we expect the time constant of this circuit to be shorter than the previous circuit, I reduced the time base to 50 milliseconds per division. Now let's start acquiring data. We can use continuous acquisition for this case, since the waveform generator applies a voltage over and over again. The acquired waveform is more or less like we expect. We can use the cursors again to get an accurate estimate of the time constant. 